Good morning and thank you very much for joining our morning class, our weekly Tuesday morning class. I thought it would be very interesting this morning to share some thoughts on what we would do if we didn't have the ability to pre-record or even just record our services and make them available to the entire congregation. Since we can't get into our building, since it would be too dangerous to do so, what would we have done if this had been the situation, let's say a few decades ago, where well, we didn't have the technology to do what we're doing now? I'm raising this question for several reasons. One is to give a little bit of historical background, actually quite a bit, because this is very significant historically, and also to try to get us to think about what we are doing and what really is happening in our lives during the high holidays. This isn't the first time that Jews have not been able to gather together in synagogues. There have been horrible, horrible pandemics before. There have been wars, there have been dislocations. And in the case of individual Jews who've had to escape and go into the woods, there wasn't a community, there wasn't a synagogue to go to. If they had a sense of time, and many really did, and knew when Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur were, what would those Jews do when it came to the high holidays? That's the question I'm raising. Now, let's, let's backtrack just slightly. We know in order to have a formal and complete Jewish worship service, we need to have a quorum, a minion. Without the quorum, without the minion, there's certain things you can't do. You're not going to be able to say Kaddish. You're not going to be able to do the Kedusha, Barhu, Torah reading. For most individuals, the lack of a minion is significant if they have to say Kaddish for a loved one. Now, if you can't be in a minion, again, not even worrying about a pandemic, what do you do? The idea of community worship, communal worship, a group together, a quorum or a lot more, is the ideal. But every Jew, and I'm speaking historically and traditionally, every Jew throughout the ages was under the obligation to pray, to say the words that were determined by the rabbis of old, to pray in the evening, in the morning, in the afternoon, on Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh, and the festivals, also a Musaf, an additional service, and on Yom Kippur, a Ne'ilah service. So if let's say I'm a Jew and I'm out in the middle of nowhere and I'm 100 miles from this synagogue and 200 from that, what was I supposed to do this morning? I couldn't very well pray with a minion. If I had to say Kaddish, I wouldn't be able to. I'd accept that reality. The intention, sure, the act, I just couldn't do, it was beyond me. But I would say my morning prayers. Now, how am I going to say my morning prayers? I would either have a Siddur or for the High Holidays on Maksor with me, or I would be familiar enough to be able to go over everything in my memory. I'm going to elaborate upon that in a moment or so. Because there's a real divide here. Well, we ask what's happening at the high holidays and listen carefully to what people say. On the one hand, they will say, I'm going to the high holiday services. I am going to attend the high holiday services. You seldom hear the expression, and it's not that people aren't doing it. I am going to pray on Rosh Hashanah. The act of the individual the act of the individual, acting, taking an active role. It's not just a passive role. We're not just there to hear the words that are read by a rabbi or chanted by a musician. Not in the slightest. That embellishes the service. That makes it all the more beautiful. The sermon is an extra add-on. The main goal is for you and for me to say the required prayers. Now, let's again say I'm out in the middle of nowhere all by myself. 
I still, even though I'm singular, need to pray in the plural. I will say Avinu Malkenu, the new ending, our. Eloheinu, our God. And in doing that, and I'm connecting up with something I said a couple of weeks ago, we are again creating community. I am part of a much larger Jewish community. And many times, I know all of us must have heard it several times in our lifetime. The rabbi will say, here we are, this Rosh Hashanah, saying the same prayers that Jews have said through the ages and the Jews throughout the world are saying together on this day. There's absolute power behind that. Yes, we are doing that. Now, what would I do? I'm going to answer this question on two levels. The second level is, what would I do as a rabbi today? And I'm assuming that everything else being equal, we could be here on Longbow Key, we could be facing this pandemic, but we don't have the technology to make the services available to you. We all sort of have to be stuck at home. Knowing that I couldn't do much more, and I'm speaking very personally, I would prepare in advance because I know this is coming. And I would get one of my high holiday prayer books. And as a little parenthesis here, I have in my collection quite a few of various varieties of Jewish religious expression over the ages. And during Rosh Hashanah, I would sit down if only by myself, and you've heard me say this too, start by reading and end up by praying the words that are in that text. Okay, I have some prayer books. Rabbis often do. Some congregants, as a matter of course, say we need to get ourselves copies of the prayer book. And let's say I didn't have that. Now go to the other extreme, and in the middle we'll try to talk about what I would have done before I was a rabbi, before I even considered being a rabbi. The other extreme is, you know it's Rosh Hashanah. You know you're supposed to say certain prayers. You're all by yourself. You don't have a machsor, a high holiday prayer book. You're so poorly educated that you hardly remember anything at all. You can't even say Avinu Malkenu and I don't know what comes after that. There's the old Hasidic story and it's very powerful and very cute all at the same time where somebody says to God, I don't know the words of the prayers, but you do. And what I'm going to do is recite the letters of the alphabet to you, and you, God, put them together in the shape and the form to make up the prayers that I want to offer. That's not the ideal, but it's a very powerful act of commitment. Now, what would I have done before I ever decided to be a rabbi? Uh, I have to say, growing up, we did have prayer books in our house, and quite a few. But I think I would have done a watered down version of what I would do today. I would have found one of those books and gone through it. I would not want to view the high holidays as an effort to get together, cart my body to a building, and worst case, see a performance. Now, I know that's what many people do, and I'm glad they do. I'm glad there is something that attracts people. I'm glad we have put so much of our musical energy into preparing high holiday music. I'm glad we have used our liturgical creativity to have new prayers and new formulations in, for example, Mishkan Hanefesh, the new high holiday prayer book. I know all of this. But I would not say just because I can't go anywhere doesn't mean I can't pray. I lose out a lot. There's a special feeling. At Temple Beth Israel, one of the special feelings was having some apples and honey that David always put out for us. And in response to that, on Friday night, and we just arbitrarily chose six o'clock from our house, it'll take five minutes at most, we're gonna do an apples and honey ceremony 
will say the appropriate blessing, Borei Priha Eitz, who created the fruit of the tree, or the apple, will dip it in the honey, will have some sweetness at least in our lives. That is something we can do. And we can educate ourselves to know that while we are at a high holiday service, it doesn't just have to be sitting back and looking and listening. We hope to engage you, get you wound up in the words. Now we all focus on different things. Some of us are focusing on the music, to be sure. Some of us are focusing on the Torah reading, to be sure. Some of us come just for the sermon. Some of us on Yom Kippur just come for Yisker. But all the words that are in our High Holiday Machs, or our High Holiday Prayer Book, and Mishkan HaNefesh is just one of the latest editions of many editions throughout the ages. However traditional it is, however non-traditional it is, it follows in a pattern. This is the effort of the Jewish people to express ourselves. And I think that expression right there, to express ourselves is very important. We need to express ourselves religiously. We need to express ourselves Jewishly. If we can't do it in person, okay. If we can't, we can't. We don't want to put lives at risk. It boggles my mind that some people in the Jewish world feel otherwise. We can't, we do the next best thing we can possibly do. And I sincerely hope that all of you will be able to take advantage of the pre-recorded services that we have for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. On one of our e-blasts, and we're sending out so many I can't even keep track of them, you can do a PDF download of whatever, however it's called, of our prayer book, so you can follow along. We have not been able to let people borrow our prayer books because of CDC regulations. If you borrow something, then you can't bring it back because who knows what was it, it was exposed to. But even if you had to sit back and listen, even if for those of you who can't see well or can't see well at all, and it's impossible to follow along in a prayer book, you follow along with your ears and you follow along with your mind and your heart. So I'm gonna say, what would you do if we didn't have recorded services? Some of you would say nothing. Some of you would say, I don't know. Some of you would say, I go somewhere else. Some of you would say, I'd wait until next year. Well, I hope we can wait until next year when we're back in our sanctuary. But meanwhile, I wanna open this up to uh, something resembling a general discussion and maybe we can go from there. Thank you for joining us.